What you doing? Cooling off? Down here at Amy G. Carter Lake in Bowie, Texas. See if we can't catch a fish or two. May do an all-nighter. Y'all stick around. If you're not a subscriber yet, be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button down below and ring that bell icon so you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Hey, hey, don't pee on my tire. Oh. Not extremely deep right here. I know there's some parts in this lake that are pretty deep. I'm going to have to get the water shoes on. Let's see how cool this water is. Let's see how deep it is. Now if I fall off in a hole, hopefully at least it'll be on video. I can't catch no catfish. Many hours later. Mm, my cousin Chris getting uh, ready to cook some steaks. It's a big old grill right there. Not real sure what he's doing. Oh, uh, maybe that goes. I don't know. So what is that for? Huh? What is that for? Well, it's actually for not using this. Some people hate having fuel on their fire. They say it messes with the taste of their meat, which I have to say is a bunch of pahooey. Yeah. You're supposed to put paper where them holes are, and that gets them started. But I, what I use it for is so I can have extra coals. And oh, okay. It'll just coal them up whenever <laughs> I need them coals. Because this right here this is the greatest grill in the whole world. As far as because it seems like the coals burn quicker in this thing. And so I need extra coals, especially for that thick meat. Now, if we was cooking chicken or something like that, I wouldn't have to. Or if we was cooking, you know, thick steaks, not block or guy, mm -hmm. that'd probably do it. But what we got, I'm gonna have to use that. And I use that mostly for my smoker because I like smoking so long and then for a while don't put no wood on it and just use coals. I've gotten to where I do that now because you don't use up as much wood. Huh. Yeah, I had never thought about that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. That was my cousin Chris, by the way. Cook out tip from Chris. A grilling tip from Chris. I don't know. We'll throw this uh, swim bait around a little bit. See if we can't get a nibble. Oh man, my glasses are broke. Well, I guess I'll be getting a new pair of sunglasses. Like I said, this is Amon G. Carter Lake. Just, uh, what direction is that? It would be south of Bowie? I'll tell you what, let's try. Let's go right over there. Check that out. Not very deep, but it's kind of shaded looking over there, maybe. We shall see. <laughs> Where's that 
I say, I always check to make sure your two-piece rod is put together good. Nothing like throwing off the other half of your rod. Yeah, I love two-piece rods except for that. Show you a little something here. If you're fishing braided line, watch, let's see, if you can see that. Kind of watch for spots like that. Sometimes it gets uh, scraped up against a tree limb, rock, or in this case, I think it was a fishing hook. Not real sure, but we're gonna have to cut that out. So now's as good a time as any, I reckon. And if you can see, we'll tie a knot. Run it through there. Get you a little slack. And wrap it you know, seven, eight times, four times. Whatever you feel like doing. As long as you get it at least four times, you should be fine. Of course, the more the better. And then just run the string back on through that loop and hold that one open. Right like that. Grab that tag end and pull it tight. How's that? I would go ahead and cut off this axis if you got to bring them out. As long as it's like a quarter of an inch or less, you ought to be alright. Eighth of an inch. Whatever it takes. Now I don't have to really worry about that bad spot in that line. Just watch on your braided line for them bad spots. It can sure save a bad day. That looks like a project. <laughs> My life is a project. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at these things real quick. Ooh, no. Yeah, let's take some pictures. <laughs>